Russian missiles have hit Ukraine's western city of Lviv, which has been providing shelter for people fleeing the fighting in the east. Meanwhile, Ukrainian soldiers are refusing to surrender in the besieged port of Mariupol. France's far-right presidential candidate Marine Le Pen is facing renewed EU fraud claims with less than a week to go before the polls. And authorities in Shanghai report the first COVID-19 deaths in the latest outbreak in China's most populous city. Fighting to the end, Ukrainian forces are holding out inside the shattered city of Mariupol. They have rejected Russia's ultimatum to surrender or die, a decision that may lead to an attack at any moment in this strategic enclave. They also fear that Russia will now restrict access to the city. In his nightly address, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky called for more weapons and reiterated that he's not willing to cede territory in the East to end war. Russian forces are destroying Mariupol. They want to wipe it off the face of the earth, along with other places in the Donetsk and Luhansk regions. We are in constant contact with our partners. We are grateful to those who sent help, truly grateful. But those who have the weapons and ammunition we need and are holding them back, they must know that the fate of this battle also depends on them. The fate of the people is at stake. Russian shelling continued on Sunday over Kharkiv, killing at least five people and injuring 13. Acts of deliberate terror, according to Zelensky, who said that in the last four days alone, 18 people have died in Ukraine's second largest city, where officials claim several villages have been liberated. But Ukraine is already thinking of post-war reconstruction. The president has spoken with the International Monetary Fund about the country's financial stability. The IMF managing director Kristalina Georgieva said continued economic support by Ukraine's partners is essential. The European Commission has announced additional humanitarian funding of 50 million euros to support those affected by Russia's invasion, including 45 million for humanitarian projects in Ukraine and 5 million for Moldova. Reports are coming in to us that the western Ukrainian city of Lviv has been hit by a number of Russian missiles. The city has been relatively untouched since the war began and, of course, it's been the place where thousands have sought refuge from the fighting in the east. Let's talk now to Peter Dickinson. He is the Ukraine editor at the Atlantic Council and he joins me from the Czech Republic. Well, uh, thanks for taking time to speak to us here. Just wanted to speak to you firstly about that breaking news. We know very little other than the mayor of the city is saying around five missiles have hit. Very little reports of uh, what damage that's caused. But if these reports are confirmed, it would seem to suggest there's been a dramatic development in the fighting. All right, well, thank you. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to join you. Yes, the news from Lviv is alarming. Um, it's not the first by any means a, a significant airstrike on Lviv, but it, it does seem like an escalation. At this stage, details are are limited, but it's 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 a clear reminder that Russia's uh, campaign against Ukraine remains nationwide. Whilst the troops of while well, Russia has retreated from northern Ukraine, essentially lost the battle for Kiev, uh, they remain active across the country. And these airstrikes are are a reminder that they will continue to hit uh, key infrastructure across the country as part of the the Kremlin's campaign to try and force Ukraine into. Uh, in, in, into concessions, force Ukraine to its knees effectively and break the country's will to resist. Uh, must, much of the targets, it seems at this stage, were, are civilian targets in the Viv. They've been fairly indiscriminate in their attacks. Uh, and the, the fear now is that we will have further, further civilian casualties. Well, let's uh, cross now over to uh, southeastern uh, Ukraine and specifically Mariupol, the city which remains uh, besieged. The, the reports of uh, the last remaining pocket of resistance in that uh, steel mill, that sprawling steel mill. How long do you think that they can resist? Well, that's that's a good question. We don't know. Um, the reports from Mariupol have been have been have been grave for, for weeks on end now. The situation is is is, is uh, extremely dire there uh, for the civilians and for the defenders of the city. Uh, they've now been reduced to a very small pocket. Uh, the territory that's now occupied by Ukrainian forces in Mariupol is is highly defensible. Uh, it's it, it's it's an industrial uh, area which has been largely destroyed, but still is is uh, a maze. 
uh, with a lot of underground areas. So the potential to hold out is quite strong. But of course, it's going to be a very desperate battle with little hope of, 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 of relief. So essentially, it's almost a suicide mission now for the soldiers who remain there. And the fear is that they will gradually simply be worn down. At the same time, we've seen this weekend official figures from Poland uh, saying that a, a new number of people are returning back to Ukraine. It's almost in parity the number of people who are leaving this, suggesting that perhaps in some areas they don't fear the consequences of the fighting. Well, I think Ukrainians have shown the world an incredible level of courage and bravery over the last two months of the war. Uh, that's now being seen again by those Ukrainians who want to go home, even though clearly there is huge danger. The airstrikes in Lviv today are, are, are a reminder that the whole country remains under threat at any moment of, of, of attack uh, via rockets, via missiles, via airstrikes. And yet people are hungry to go home. There's been a massive flow of people going back uh, to the point where the Kiev authorities have had to say, guys, hold on, wait a minute. It's a little bit early yet. They've actually been trying to encourage people to hold on because there's been such a, a, a readiness to come home. This is what's left of the village of Andrivka, some 60 kilometers northwest of Kyiv. Under Russian occupation for a month, it was freed two weeks ago. Uh. Well, the level of destruction here is really impressive. There isn't one house that uh, has been spared in this village. And in many places we can see this sign, this question mark, which uh, just indicates that there could still be unexploded devices in the houses like mines or bombs, and there's still plenty around. At least 40 people were allegedly killed here by Russian soldiers. Only six were buried recently in the village cemetery. They were exhumated from gardens where their relatives had buried them, like Mikola's son, Yuri. They came, told them to come out of the house. He and his wife came out of the house with guns to their heads. They let his wife go. She said, I have two kids, don't kill me. And they shot him. And this is where his blood was. There was a blood stain here. Yuri was among several who were killed after Russian tanks were attacked by the Ukrainian forces. They accuse them of giving away the column through their phones. It's been 44 days. I don't have any more tears. What can I do? A father has to bury his son. The most important thing is that he didn't betray Ukraine. That is the most important thing. It will take weeks until many more families in the village are able to give their relatives a final resting place. Barry Goria and Rivka. Euronews. At the Polish-Belarusian border, gridlock reigns. Miles and miles of Russian and Belarusian registered lorries are backed up as they attempted to leave the European Union before a sanctions deadline last Saturday at midnight. From now on, only trucks carrying medicine, mail or petroleum products will be able to enter the bloc. It's feared that many miss the deadline. These drivers are now liable for fines and the possibility that their vehicles will be impounded. However, so far there have been no reports of rigorous enforcement as queues still persist. The EU introduced the sanctions in part due to protests by Ukrainians and Poles at the border with Belarus. People were angry that trade continued to flow as normal and argued that it was helping to fund the war. Much more news and analysis to come after the break. Don't go anywhere.